This is the copper zinc superoxide dismutase protein with one superoxide molecule complex at each active site. The role of the copper zinc superoxide dismutase system is to catalyze the conversion of the potentially toxic superoxide anion and convert it into the less toxic substances hydrogen peroxide and dioxygen. When superoxide is protonated, it can destroy DNA and enzymes in the body through oxidative damage. The copper ion at the enzyme active site catalyzes the reaction while the zinc ion is present for support and stabilization. There are three different types of superoxide dismutase. There's intracellular copper zinc superoxide dismutase, referred to as SOD1. There's manganese superoxide dismutase, referred to as SOD2, which is found in the mitochondrial matrix. And there is also extracellular copper zinc superoxide dismutase, referred to as SOD3, which is found on tissues on the extracellular matrix and on cell surfaces. Here we will focus on SOD1. SOD1 is found in the cytoplasm of the cells. The cytoplasm is composed of 80% water. In this figure, the hydrophilic regions are depicted by the blue color, and the hydrophobic regions are shown in orange. This globular protein folds so that the solvent exposed exterior is largely composed of hydrophilic amino acids, while hydrophobic amino acids reside mostly in the interior and away from exposure to the polar solvent. Amyotrophic lateral sclerosis, better known as Lou Gehrig's disease, is a disease in which mutations in genes are inherited. It has recently been discovered that one of these mutations is in superoxide dismutase. The role of SOD1 in Lou Gehrig's disease is currently being researched in order to find treatments and a possible cure for this disease. This is another view of the reaction catalyzed by superoxide dismutase. This cycle consists of two different redox reactions. On the right, the superoxide is oxidized to dioxygen, while the copper is reduced from an oxidation state of 2 to 1. This happens by direct coordination of copper 2 to superoxide and the redox reaction occurs in her sphere. Then on the left, the superoxide is reduced to hydrogen peroxide, while the copper is oxidized back to an oxidation state of 2. However, there is no direct coordination of copper 1 to superoxide, and therefore this redox reaction occurs outer sphere. The cycle then continues with these two steps in order to convert superoxide into the less toxic substances dioxygen and hydrogen peroxide. The superoxide dismutase protein is a dimer that is composed of two identical subunits. Each subunit is composed of 151 amino acid residues. These amino acid residues are arranged in eight beta sheets and three exterior loops. The two identical subunits are differentiated by red and blue ribbon diagrams shown. Each subunit has an active site in which superoxide molecules will bind to and will either be oxidized or reduced in the redox reaction. The two subunits line up on an axis and are oriented opposite one another meaning that the active sites on the subunits point opposite directions. In this depiction, the N termini are shown in blue and the C termini are shown in red, showing the opposite alignment of the subunits. One very important aspect of superoxide dismutase is the funnel shape that leads to the active site. In the funnel are the two cations, zinc and copper, along with the positively charged amino acids histidine and arginine. The positive charge of the ions and amino acids attracts the negatively charged superoxide anion. Also, the small funnel shape is selective towards small molecules such as superoxide. The copper ion is exposed in the funnel so the anion can bind to it. However, the zinc ion is buried within the protein. The superoxide molecule, shown in red on the outside of the surface of the protein, is attracted to the copper 2 ion. This is the active site of copper zinc superoxide dismutase. The copper 2 metal center is seen in gold. This is a site where superoxide molecule will bind and redox reaction will occur. Copper 2 is a DNI metal and therefore has electrons and antibonding orbitals. This weakens the bonds, making copper 2 more labile and reactive. The zinc metal center is depicted as a gray sphere. Zinc does not directly play a role in the catalysis of the dismutase reaction. However, it is a structural scaffold for this molecule. This image pertains to the part of the cycle that deals with the oxidation of the superoxide molecule by copper 2. Ligand field theory predicts that the geometry surrounding copper 2, which is a D9 metal, would be Jean Teller distorted octahedron. This would create a square plane or square pyramid. The copper coordination geometry is a distorted square pyramid when superoxide is bound to the copper active site. 
This distorted square pyramid is not the ideal geometry for copper 2 based on Lincoln field theory. However, it is the destabilization of the copper 2 that allows redox cycling to more easily occur. The superoxide molecule is a hard base and the copper 2 metal center is a borderline acid. According to hard soft acid base theory, there will be interactions between these two metals. The superoxide molecule binds to the copper 2 metal center and the redox reaction is conducted through an inner sphere electron transfer. This image now pertains to the part of the cycle that deals with the reduction of the superoxide molecule by copper 1. Ligand field theory does not play a role in the determination of the geometry surrounding the copper 1 metal center since copper 1 is a D10 metal and does not have ligand field stabilization energy. The coordination geometry that surrounds the copper 1 metal center is a distorted trigonal plane. In this step of the reaction, superoxide does not bind directly to copper 1, but rather superoxide is held in the active site through hydrogen bonding and electrostatic attraction. The fact that superoxide binds directly to copper 2 in the first part of the cycle, but does not bind directly to copper 1 in the second part of the cycle, is not surprising based on hard soft acid base principles. According to hard soft acid base theory, the soft copper 1 ion is not a preferred acid for the hard superoxide base. The zinc metal center does not play a role in the catalysis directly, but instead is a structural scaffold. Ligand field theory does not play a role in the determination of the geometry surrounding zinc since it is a D10 metal, and the geometry instead is determined through sterics and protein constraints. The geometry that surrounds the zinc metal center is distorted tetrahedron, which is a favored geometry due to sterics and structural constraints imposed by the polypeptide.